There are three types of colonic volvulus that we need to know about. The least common is in the transverse colon. The ones that we really need to know about are sequel volvulus and sigmoid volvulus. They can present quite similarly with nonspecific abdominal pain and signs and symptoms of abdominal obstruction. However, the patient profile is usually different, um, as are the x-ray features, and importantly, the management is different for these two conditions. In sequel volvulus, the patients tend to be younger versus in sigmoid volvulus when they're older and they can have underlying chronic constipation. And how do they look differently on x-ray? So in, v in sequel volvulus, you will see a dilated gas-filled viscous. This tends to arise in the pelvis and uh, moves into the left upper quadrant. Um, another differentiating factor is that the dilated cecum tends to uh, keep the haustra, whereas the dilated sigmoid will be ahaustral. Um, but given the uh, location of the cecum, which is distal to the small bowel, you will eventually get small bowel obstruction, and this can be uh, seen as centrally located dilated loops of bowel. They usually have the appearance of stacked coins because of the valvulae conoventes, which go around the whole um, circumference of the small bowel. In contrast to this, in sigmoid volvulus, you get a dilated uh, gas-filled viscous, which has a very typical U-shape or coffee bean shape, as demonstrated here. Again, because the sigmoid is the distal uh, most part of the large bowel, you eventually will get large bowel obstruction. And just as a recap, these will be peripherally placed uh, dilated loops. They have haustra, uh, which look different to valvulae conoventes because they don't go the whole circumference round the uh, bowel. And the pelvic overlay sign is when the dilated sigmoid overlays dilated large bowel. Importantly, the management in sequel volvulus is uh, surgical and in sigmoid, it's um, conservative with a flatus tube. So looking at this x-ray, abdominal frontal x-ray we can see this dilated gas filled loop um, it's not the stomach because we can see that superiorly um, we can see what looks like the small bowel which is coming out of this viscous and this is likely to be the terminal ileum there's no other abnormal feature on this x-ray except for kyphoscoliosis so let's go with a diagnosis of sequel volvulus we'll just check out the x-ray to confirm our suspicion here we can see a dilated cecum and the laser here is pointing to the ileocecal valve and that what, what we saw on the x-ray was the terminal ileum. We're looking for twist and there's the twist and it's actually in the ascending colon and there it is again. Um, and this has led to twisting of the mesentery which has led to dilatation of the cecum and this is in keeping with a cecal volvulus. So let's take another look at, uh, look at another example. On this frontal x-ray, we have a very dilated gas-filled loop. This has taken the shape of a coffee bean. And actually behind it, we can see these dilated loops of bowel, which have haustras. So this is large bowel. And this is uh, the pelvic overlay sign that we mentioned before. And so this is actually sigmoid volvulus. And you can appreciate uh, that it looks quite different to the sequel volvulus. However, um, sometimes you can't tell on x-ray and you need to do a CT. So if we look at this, uh, these axial slices on the CT abdomen, we can see all this dilated large bowel. And again, we're looking for twist. And there is the twist, which is in the sigmoid colon. Um, there it is again. And... Um, Worrying in this particular scan is that we can see some pneumatosis in the cecum, which does raise the possibility of ischemia, which is a potential complication of volvulus. Um, so in summary, we have talked about cecal versus sigmoid volvulus, um, and I hope this video has been useful.